Okay, so um, today I want to provide some clarity on the topic of, or the question of whether or not A spheres truly correct field curvature. And uh, in fact, they do not correct field curvature. Uh, I'm going to do it in, in, by way of providing three design examples using a singlet. All right, the third example would be a singlet that almost fully corrects third order field curvature without using A spheres. Um, but the but the first example is going to be about uh, something that somebody said um, in a post of mine on LinkedIn, where I I, I talked about um, the wiggles of an ace of a mobile phone lens and that field curvature is not correctable by A spheres because it is a shape independent aberration. And someone said I disagree with you, Runyon, and that. A spheres do correct field curvature. Uh, to be specific, uh, they correct the um, they cannot correct the sagittal field curvature, but they can correct the tangential. So, in my first example, I'm going to dis disprove that. Uh, in fact, I'm going to show that a an A sphere can flatten either the tangential or the sagittal field because that that it, th these this is an astigmatic aberration and astigmatism is a shape dependent aberration and it is correctable with an a sphere and in fact you can actually flatten the tangential field or the sagittal field without using a spheres and the way i did that in a singlet design example is uh, discussed in this book modern classical optical system design that i published uh, in the uh, iop press last year all right and it's in the section called Heuristic lens design theory, and in there you can see in the early pages how how I did that. But here, let's go to this um, this design example here, the very first example where I'm going to flatten the sagittal field because that person said you cannot flatten the sagittal field with an a sphere. You can, in fact, again, you can do it without an a sphere, and you can do it with an a sphere. All right. Uh, so I'm going to just um, I've, I've, I've created pre-created a merit function here because I wanted to save time. I only have 15, 15 minutes to present all this stuff here. Uh, so here's a singlet, biconvex. I purposely make it biconvex, okay? Um, and, and you, you'll see why later on. Those of you who are well-versed in aberration theory will know where I'm going with this, okay? I'm going to purposely make it biconvex. And I'm going to put variables on the um, stop uh distance uh and the thickness of the lens i'm going to use a high index glass because it works much better with a high index glass and then um i am going to put a marginal ray solve here and uh, the f number is f14 wavelength is monochromatic don't you just love monochromatic systems it's just so much easier to deal with rather than polychromatic fields will be uh half field of 20 degrees all right and here is the current field curvature plot. Forget about, we're going to ignore everything else. We're going to ignore distortion, right? And everything else. We're just going to look at field curvature. So I'm going to limit uh, the field curvature maximum to plus or minus five millimeters. And you can see the tangential as a, as a curvature there. That's not, not really field curvature. That's, that's, that's not a field, okay? You, there, there's, there's no field if there's a stigmatism. There's a tangential field, sagittal field, but they're not really fields because ordinarily you wouldn't put the image plane in any one of those. Actually, you you would in the old days if you got a um, old sufficiently corrected um, system with residual astigmatism, you would normally flatten the tangential field and put the image plane right there. And there, there are reasons for that, and I explained that in my book as well. This this book, but anyway, um, all right. So let me let me create an even a sphere on the right surface and put variable a variable on the on the conic uh I put a variable on the fourth order and um despite what you may have learned in school not to put variables in the fourth order actually that's not very correct you actually should uh maybe in a future video i'll explain why um and i'm just gonna put variable to the tenth order yeah, and that's good enough. And then in the mirror function, I'm just monitoring the EFL. It should be around 28 millimeters. It's just almost random. It's 28. I'm not going to control that. I'm going to control that by fixing the radius of curvature. Okay. Uh, I am constraining the 
glass thickness to make it not so not not zero and and a maximum glass thickness to be 150 or so and what i'm going to do next is i'm going to put targets on a field curvature the paraxial field curvature para parabasal field curvature just kind of like thin ray bundles uh for the sagittal only at the half field and the full field make sure that it's zero all right so what happens if i do that and optimize i'm just going to um uh let's hammer it okay and again uh, a, a pop-up windows comes out you cannot see it because of this just the way i record this um but it's uh okay it's optimized and it's uh okay let's see what do you get about zero right okay what's the field curvature like okay there we go right a flattened sagittal field using conic and four six eighth tenth order terms a flattened sagittal field the tangential field is still unflattened uh it's curved so th there's a proof that you can flatten the sagittal field with an a sphere and again you can flatten flatten it even if you use purely spherical surfaces okay so that's that uh first example second example i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is as a let's undo everything right and do everything as a test for whether or not a spheres can really correct the field curvature i'm going to purposely fix the base radius to be both convex okay if you're aberration theorist you'll know why i'm doing that uh if if in fact field curvature is correctable with an a sphere the, even if i put both convex surfaces for the base radius it should correct the field curvature Let's see, and let's let's test using a Q polynomial, uh, Q po Q A sphere, Q type A sphere, Q type Q type A sphere. Let's let's do it for both surfaces. Q type A sphere. Um, Q Q type A sphere. Leave the type to zero because that's like that's the Q type with a. Um, anyway, so you you can read the Z max manual for that. Let's use uh, five terms. Why not? Terms number of radius one, and let's put variables. Okay, I'm gonna do the old fashioned way. I don't know any shortcuts to this, I have to, to putting variables on all the coefficients, so I'm gonna just manually do it. I'm a very manual person, I manually do just about everything variable, 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 and variable. Every now and then, you see me looking to the corner here because. I put a stopwatch on there <laughs> the time myself. Let's put variable on the conic. Um, EFL is, is already there, and that's that. That's that. Okay, so um, let me control the field curvature as well in the tangential. Oops. Let's just do it this way copy, paste, tangential and sagittal, right? And Control that, and no, that should be it. Okay, so let's see what happens if I optimize this lens for that field curvature, right? Let's hammer it. Okay, and it uh, gives me this uh, nice looking lens here, and field curvature is. Take a look at this, all right? Okay, um, is this a flattened field? It's not, right? Look at this. Look at the tangential. It's it's um, curving, 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 wiggly. The sagittal is somewhat flat here, but curves here. That's not a flattened field, right? Um, if I were to let it rescale, what do you see? Okay. Oh, let's let's not rescale. Let's let's make it smaller. Let's reduce the scale. Look at the look at here, right? Look at near the axis. It's still very curved, right? To one millimeter. So what's happening here is not correction of field coverage. This is this is aberration balancing. It's using astigmatism to balance the uh, the field. And if you are able to get the deviations for the sagittal and tangential to be such that the deviation from the parasitic image plane to be within a certain margin. You're not correcting field curvature. You are balancing astigmatism with field curvature with a flattened, flattened image, a flat image plane, um, and that's sort of like you know how you've got the circle of least confusion with spherical aberration, and you're putting the image plane at the circle of least confusion. That's balancing spherical aberration with 
defocus. Here, you're balancing astigmatism with field curvature. This is not field curvature correction, all right? So now, I'm going to show you field curvature correction that is even better than this without using a sphere. So let me undo everything. Undo, 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 undo. Okay, you know what? Uh, I've undone most of the stuff here, right? Okay, good. So now I'm just going to convert this back to a standard surface. No A spheres. Standard surface. No A spheres. Okay, no A spheres, no conic, nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, so what do I do? What I'm going to do is I'm going to now um, uh, pick up the first lens. I gotta convert it to like this, something like this, and I gotta make the EFL about okay. The EFL previously was twenty eight millimeters, so let's let's make sure that it, it gets to become twenty eight millimeters. Now, I'm gonna make sure that the radius of curvature in the left and right surfaces always match each other. If you're an aberration balancer, if you're a ray bender, you know what I'm doing here. It it's called the Petzval theorem, right? It's, um, anyway, for those who are not familiar with the Petzval theorem, you can read about it. You can read about it in, again, my book, and not, don't just stick to my book. I mean, my book is not a pure rate bending lens design book. Read the other, or review your class notes, okay? And then I'm going to, let's see, what else? I think that's all I have to do, except the mirror function here, what I'm going to do instead of this is I'm going to release the weight on the half field I'm going to include field curvature tangential. Forget about half field. And I'm not going to even control the field curvature here. I'm going to control the astigmatism. I'm going to make sure that the difference between the sagittal and tangential is zero. That that corrects astigmatism. Okay, and I think that should be good enough. I think. All right. So um. Here goes, right? I'm going to optimize this. Um, EFL will be, yep, okay, so good. So let's optimize it. Just going to hammer it. Okay. Okay, now I've got a lens that looks like this. Maybe I'll show the curvature more. It, it's, it's, a, it's a meniscus lens, thick meniscus lens. Let's go to the field curvature plot. Okay, look at how flat it is. Previously, if you rewind this YouTube video, uh, let's rescale to five millimeters. That was the original one, right? You saw the eight, you saw using a spheres. You got this wiggly stuff, right? Now you've got a very very flat sagittal and tangential field, and it, it did not even control field curvature. I did not say uh, zero down the field curvature, right? I uh, I just zeroed down the astigmatism. Or bring it down to a scale of one millimeter. So you can see it's still very flat. Obviously, okay. Let me let me do an auto scale. Auto scale. It's um, um, fifty microns. You know, fifty microns. That's 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 okay. If you go down to fifty microns or so here, you can see it's not that. Uh, it's still somewhat astigmatic, right? But it's better than the a sphere, right? Put back to one millimeter is much better. Okay, so. If you want to correct field curvature, you gotta have astigmatism to be zero. S and T curves are together, and then they fall on the Petzville surface, and then um, use zero down the Petzville sum. That will bring your third order field curvature to zero. You could have residual high residual high order effects and so on and so forth. But again, this is proof that field curvature is not correctable with A spheres, and that's kind of what I want to say. Thank you. Bye-bye.